I want to remind you that this rapid response EEG was not designed to make every one of us to become an EEG tech. This was designed to enable us to make immediate risk stratification. And that is made possible through four different channels of diagnosis making. Once the EEG starts recording, you will be able to see the tracings at the bedside in real time. The second functionality of the device uh, to enable us make risk stratification is the brain stethoscope function. If you press the button on the right hand side, right by the speaker, where there is a logo of a stethoscope, you will be able to hear the sound of the EEG that's being recorded. The normal sound is going to be either flat or with very few blips here and there. The second group will be the ones who have rhythmicity and periodicity in their EEG may be more sharply contoured waveforms. These discharges are separated from each other in time. When seizure is being recorded, the sound is very unpleasant and continuous, repetitive and loud. Third functionality of the device allowing risk stratification is Clarity AI algorithm. If you press on the seizure burden button, you'll be asking the computer to quantify the amount of seizure or seizure-like activity in the last five minutes and plot it in a line graph for you and give you a percentile uh, measure. This is not the probability measure, but the percentage of time in the last five minutes where epileptic activity was abundant. Once you click uh, the button, the five minutes of EEG will be divided into uh, 10 seconds long uh, bins of EEG and the machine has been taught to identify patterns that are compatible with epileptiform activity. It will identify this for every single channel, every single electrode, and will quantify how much of the pattern exists in the last five minutes and it will give a value. After 10 seconds, it will do it for the next 5 minutes. So it's a rolling window. Every 10 seconds, it's moving forward and it's giving you value after value. If these values are plotted as a line graph, you will see the value is going up or down. We have also identified thresholds of 10, 50, and 90% to identify frequent, abundant, or continuous seizure activity. And these are consistent with the recommendations uh, made by American uh, Clinical Neurophysiology Society. If the line crosses the 90 percentile level, it means 90% of the last five minutes was spent in seizure-like activity. And that is how the device starts acting. So the algorithm uh, will be plotting the line graph on the device and you'll be able to see how the seizure burden graph has been trending up or down. On the device you see there is a number as a percentage given and that percentage is the seizure load in the last five minutes. 96% as shown on the screen means that 96% uh, of the last five minutes recognized as possible seizure activity. And that means basically more than four and a half minutes of the epoch was in seizure. So the patient um, might be going into status or might be in status epilepticus. And when that happens, the device uh, plays a, an auditory alarm to make sure that the nurse comes to the bedside and by that time the device has also turned the screen into red continuous seizures detected. This message doesn't necessarily mean that the patient has been diagnosed with status epilepticus. It is a suggestion that needs to be verified uh, with a thorough review of the EEG by, by, by an expert. I like to emphasize that the algorithm was designed to be more sensitive than specific. So as you see in the lower left corner, uh, the potential for brain damage is extremely low if a patient is uh, suppressed, for, for example, burst suppression, or is having normal or just uh, diffuse uh, slowing. As the patient starts going towards non-convulsive status epilepticus, 
the metabolic rate goes up and the potential for brain damage uh, goes up. And of course, the worst case scenario is that somebody is in convulsive status epilepticus as shown in the top right corner. What I like the um, viewers recognize is that there is always a gray zone. Um, it's never a clear cut distinction that this is uh, normal, this is abnormal. The clarity algorithm, the artificial intelligence as its uh, crudest form that is uh, currently commercialized, is designed to identify anything uh, to the top right of that curved line. It's going to be identifying many patterns of periodic discharges as well as non-convulsive status uh, cases and will alert the user to take a second look. The question that comes to everybody's mind when we talk about AI performance is how it compares to humans. In a validation study, we selected randomly 353 EEGs, cerebral EEGs, that were collected uh, from six hospitals, academic and uh, non-academic uh, small community hospitals. We gave it to uh, several uh, EEG specialist uh, neurologists uh, with EEG training to read these EEGs and label them as non-convulsive status epilepticus, uh, meaning uh, more than five minutes of seizure activity in any given channels, seizure activity less than five minutes, highly epileptiform patterns uh, such as frequent, periodic, and or rhythmic epileptiform discharges, and the rest, which is basically anything that's non-epileptiform, rhythmic delta activity, slowing, uh, or normal. Of 353 EEGs, this is what we got when humans labeled it versus the machine labeled it. All the nine status epilepticus cases were labeled correctly by the machine. Three of 33 alarms were so-called false. 21 of them were too sensitive, uh, but still pathological one might argue that the epileptologist needs to take a look at these EEGs anyway, but I think I personally am excited about this number, 157. This is why I'm excited about the AI. Imagine you are in a hospital that you have to get 353 pages during after hours, weekends, or any time because the EEG was done and you need to read it. If you don't have AI to help you, all 353 times you have to wake up and read the EEG right there. But when you have an AI, and let's imagine that all 353 EEGs were done during after hours, after midnight. So what happens is the following. Of those 353, 179 of them, you won't get a page. Of those 179, only two had seizures, but none of them had prolonged seizures. So 20 of them were highly epileptiform patterns, but for the most part, they were all normal or diffusely slow. I'm also very excited about the AI because in those nine cases where the patient was in frank status epilepticus, non-convulsive type, the ED physician who did this study, who set up the EEG after 2 a.m., they didn't have to wait for the neurologist to detect these cases. And of those so-called uh, false alarms, for the most part, they were highly pathological uh, to begin with. Now the question is how to integrate this AI algorithm into our workflows. Here is a workflow that I want to run by you. We have to understand that the AI output needs to be interpreted in the context of the user's own pretest clinical suspicion. For example, if you are a clinician and you have a very high suspicion that this patient is having seizures right now, if the clarity says over 90%, then definitely treat as soon as possible with a load of anti-seizure medication. If the suspicion is very high, but the AI output is somehow dubious. It's definitely not over 90%. That's when we can actually just wait, not treat, until we have confirmed the pathology by expert. If the expert is not available, then we just go with our clinical suspicion and treat them as we would have done if we didn't have the AI. If the suspicion is very high, 
and the AI output is definitely less than 10%, then we should definitely wait and not treat the patient until we have the EEG pathology confirmed. This is a place where we can save the hospital from unnecessary treatments, from unnecessary ICU admissions, and so on. And again, if the suspicion is very low, we guide our treatment based on AI output. For example, if the suspicion is low and the AI output is less than 10%, in those cases, definitely don't treat. Wait for non-urgent review of EEG next day. So overall, yes, there will be uh, many overcalls, but intentionally this algorithm has been designed to be more sensitive than specific because we want to capture these nine by all means. But at the same time, we want to also rule out these cases where a neurologist doesn't need to wake up in the middle of the night to review the EEGs. And then lastly, the remote visual review that's made possible through cloud connection. If you go to the portal, you'll be able to see the output of the Clarity algorithm. And as you see here, a uh, patient has been in a uh, non-convulsive seizure on the left side. And here you see the seizure burden uh, increasing. Again, the vertical line indicates uh, the seizure burden at that moment for the last five minutes. Here is another case. At this point, uh, the seizure burden is reaching the 90 percentile, and at the bedside, an alarm has uh, been triggered. If somebody is having normal EEG, you will see it like this. Uh, you have a nice uh, posterior dominant rhythm, or the alpha rhythm in 8 to 12 hertz range in channels 4, 5, uh, and 9, 10. Slowing is seen like this. Burst suppression will be seen like this lateralized periodic discharges, generalized periodic discharges, seizures, focal on the left side, another focal seizure on the left side, and then uh, non-convulsive status epilepticus.